Good afternoon. Welcome. So those of you in the back, there are a lot of seats here. So please come on up and have a seat. So I'm Peter Fisher. I'm the head of the department. And I'd like to welcome you to the 16th uh, Papalardo Symposium. 16th, that's right. Uh, and uh, this is a, a major event that we have uh, during the course of the year where uh, our Papalardo Fellows uh, give really public talks uh, about the uh, work they do. Um, our fellows are selected uh, competitively by the Papalardo Executive Committee uh, using a complex and Byzantine process that results in um, what are supposed to be 16, but are usually 18 interviews that take place in a two-day period. Uh, these interviews have become a little bit infamous, and uh, I encourage you to ask the Papalardo Fellows what they're like. But to give a, a long perspective on the uh, Papalardo Fellowship Program, I'd like to introduce Professor Marin Kardar, uh, a colleague in the Physics Department who is the longest serving member of the Executive Committee and will give a little bit of the, the history and, and the way things work. So, Professor Kardar. Thank you, Peter. So I, I'd like to share some recollections from the uh, first uh, years of the Papalardo Fellowship. Uh, I have a folder uh, of emails, and the first email of that uh, uh, folder is uh, one that I received in July 6, 1999 addressed to Ed Bertschinger, Peter Fisher, Jackie Hewitt, Roman Jakiv, and Wolfgang Catterley, stating that Neil Papalardo has agreed to provide funding for a program of distinguished postdoctoral fellows similar to Miller Fellows at Berkeley. Uh, in three years, there will be a total of nine fellows. These fellows will provide a stipend that is more generous than standard fellowships and uh, an opportunity to attract some very bright young women and men to our department. I'm writing to ask you to serve with me on the executive committee of this program. Our biggest task will be to select the fellows. Uh, we expect to send the uh, solicitations this month and applications in late fall, uh, offers in February, uh, and uh, beginning in 2000. I said, well, that's a great program. And uh, I completely ignored the email. <laughs> and then, uh, uh, yes. July 6, 1999. Yep. And so then a while later, I ran into, oops, sorry. I ran into Mark in the corridor, and he asked me, why didn't you reply to my email? And I said, look, it says Ed, Peter, Jackie, Roman, and Wolfgang. <laughs> I thought it was just informa information for me. He said, no, but I want you to also be the chair of the program at the beginning. Okay, so uh, actually Mark prepared most of the material that had to go out, including the solicitation letter that was sent out to roughly 600 people. And uh, uh, just for your information, this is the nomination form that people had to fill out. Just give the name of the candidate and submit your uh, letter and the candidate is nominated. So uh, in September, uh, uh, we had uh, uh, the executive committee look at a whole bunch of uh, applications, and uh, eventually first the interviews were arranged. And you note that this email that is sent in December 23rd is uh, by Isabel Cuna Vasconcelos, who was the first administrator of the program. You can also see that the organization of the interviews is very different from what it is currently. Uh, there were three days of interviews in January, actually. And uh, I was looking at the list of candidates that we interviewed, and they're all distinguished people. I was very impressed that I could recognize so many of them many years later on, but I decided not to include their names. Uh, so after interviewing all of these people in, uh, ending in January 25, in January 26, another change from what we have currently, uh, we decided to sort of send, uh, solicit the input of the committee by email. Now that we have interviewed all the candidates, we should make the final selections for offers to go already out in February 1. So we didn't really have that much time. Uh, but uh, 
as I note here, uh, my feeling is that we are really not all that part in our choices. The candidates were all excellent, and we could uh, very easily uh, uh, sort of uh, sort them out. But then we encountered the difficulty, which has been repeated many times since. And the difficulty is stated over here. Uh, this is, I asked uh, uh, in a previous email whether they would permit us the possibility of not three fellows, but four fellows in the first year. My argument was that at the beginning of the program, three may be very small, and we have four excellent candidates, and we can't really uh, choose between them. So please give us more money. Uh, Isabel immediately wrote back and said that uh, I looked at the budget, and I don't see how this, we could support this. You notice that this is at 2 p.m. I think around 2.10, uh, I got a message from uh, Mark saying, no, we don't have any money. And then at 2.37, I got another email from Mark saying that on second thought, I think we can make a choice and offer Soliacic the fellowship. If we get four, we could only offer two the next year, however. So thanks to Mark, we could uh, eventually recruit uh, Marin Soliacic as part of the first group, and it would have been <laughs> terrible <laughs> if it hadn't. So now that... You didn't have a very good group? <laughs> The, all the four candidates were excellent. <laughs> but the tradition that I refer to here is that ever since then, uh, this has repeated. And the chairs of uh, committees, and I see Janet there is agreeing, have uh, typically gone to the department head asking for uh, uh, the opportunity for more uh, offers. And uh, Ed Berchinger. Well, the the diagnosis, yes. You asked the department chair as opposed to asking me directly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> current chair, <sorry. laughs> All right, so Peter, <laughs> you owe me some money. <laughs> uh, okay, so what happened? Uh, so uh, very soon we started getting uh, responses back. The first one is Maria uh, Dindrich, Grindich. Uh, who accepted, and Isabel said, not bad, eh? Uh, second one to come in was Misha uh, Folkler, and the third one, eventually, Marin, said yes. Marin, we all know. Misha is a condensed matter theorist who is on the faculty of UCSD, and uh, Maria is uh, a uh, uh, condensed matter experimentalist who is uh, at UPenn currently. And, uh, we really had a fantastic group of applicants, and uh, we made excellent choices, I should say. And we also had excellent yield. That is, three out of our four candidates uh, uh, accepted, and that even for uh, uh, later on that the program was more distinguished and uh, recognized is quite a uh, good yield. Uh, I'll just uh, maybe go with one item from here, too where Isabel says that uh, uh, now that we have fellows, we should have lunches and dinners. Uh, di uh, lunches will be Wednesdays, till Wednesday. Uh, dinners Monday of the first month. Dinners in the faculty club. And lunches in 26160 uh, next to the reading room. Now I see that there's some segment of the audience who's asking, MIT has a faculty club? <laughs> we used to at that time, and an overlapping segment who's asking, reading room in 26160 used to be there. When, since it moved here, we really had to obey uh, Isabel, and so the lunch room, the Papalardo room, has to be again next to the physics reading room. Uh, okay, uh, so by the end of uh, uh, the fall term, we had uh, a list of interviews, and you can see that already uh, by that time, the format of the interviews is exactly what we have now. Two days of interviews, Thursdays and Fridays, 45 minutes per person. And uh, uh, another event that uh, occurred uh, at the end of that uh, first year is that the uh, administration of the program was uh, switched over from uh, Isabel to uh, Carol Brin. And you can see that the next email that comes from Carol Brin 
no longer has the folksy manner of writing of Isabel and has uh, uh, gone to the formal and uh, uh, precise manner of Carol, indicating uh, who we have for the next year. And we have Ashwin. Uh, we had uh, Ilya Grossberg and a string theorist, uh, David Tong. And I was looking at that picture of David Tong, and I concluded that this must have been taken when he realized that he has the Papalardo Fellowship <laughs> and knows now his place in the universe. So, uh, so I, uh, the, I started with the first email in my list, and actually by... Uh, uh, the end of uh, uh, 2000, I was already, by January 2001, I was already on sabbatical, and uh, Roman Jakif became chair, taking uh, my position. And uh, since I started with the first email of my list, I will end with the second email of my list, which immediately responding to Mark, uh, Roman Jakif wrote, uh, thank you for inviting me to serve on the committee for the new fellowships. I'm happy to accept. And I hope this will prove to be a boon to both the future fellows and our department. And I think this one sentence succinctly captures what program has meant to us. So thank you, Neil. Thank you, Mark. And thank the fellows for having made this program a success. <laughs>